Hey guys and welcome back to another video and another signing that many of us probably haven't heard a few things about so of course I have to get someone in with a little bit more expertise than me on this subject. He's a guy that some of you definitely will know actually, uh, affectionately known <laughs> by Christoph himself as the KDB expert, the Belgian football expert Christoph Terra and hopefully not butchered your name too much. Christoph, welcome to the channel and thank you so much for coming on mate. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not much of the name, that's a good start. Thank so. you, thank you. I tried. Yeah, so basically, Christoph, you're the European football correspondent for HLN, right? Oh, is, that, is that right for in, in Belgium? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Traveling, yeah, I used to live in England for yeah, nine years and I was traveling uh, all over Europe because, yeah, at the at the peak of Belgium in the Premier League, I think we had 22 Belgians, 23, but now, except from Kevin De Bruyne and a few wonders, they're all over Europe, so basically spending time between Manchester, Madrid, Milano this season. That's so a that hell of a lifestyle, my, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. but it's, uh, it's difficult to choose uh, which city uh, nowadays because in Manchester it's now as hot as in Madrid, I think. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it, today it is. I, I'm absolutely sweltering. It's boiling. Um, but that's um, it's a hell of a lot of travelling, but I guess it means you get to know what's going on in general around Belgian football and so on. And um, this is why I've asked you to come on, so thank you so, so much. Um, because certainly... Sergio Gomez, uh, as I'm, uh, as we agreed to do this, it hadn't actually been confirmed yet, but then Guardiola, like about an hour ago, during the press conference, uh, announced that Sergio Gomez is going to stay with Manchester City uh, with the first team in this coming season. I think it's well known that uh, City don't have really a backup left back uh, over, after Joao Cancelo, and it seems Gomez is going to get a bit of a chance. So hence why I could do with what... Um, it's your expertise, basically. So Sergio Gomez, of course, last season, uh, he was Andalex Player of the Year. Uh, I think he got something like 15 assists and seven goals, which is mightily impressive. Um, what was the reputation of Sergio Gomez over in the Jupiter League in general and in Belgium? Well, he was one of the the best players last season. Before he got, yeah, he struggled in the, in the last few weeks and yeah, maybe even months of the season with, 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 with an injury, but he kept on playing. But attacking wise uh, he offered Anderlecht a lot to be fair if you give 10, ten assists uh, you score the penalties you you give the free kicks you add something to a game and it's even a bit bizarre how he ended up as a left back because yeah before he signed everybody was looking at it yeah it's going to be another attacking midfielder because as we yeah as some City fans might already have Googled, I think he, for Spain under 21, he used to play sometimes on the, on the, as a right winger, sometimes yeah. as a left winger, even as a central attacking midfielder. But he's basically played everywhere, but Vincent Company was convinced he could be a good left back. And that's how it all started off. And he, yeah, was the best offensive uh, left back in the Belgian league by far, also because you could see, uh, yeah, his technical qualities, yeah, because he's a Barcelona youth product, you see uh, they have a, a very, very good youth, uh, education uh, technically. And yeah, yeah he showed a few skills, to be fair. That's, that's a good one. I don't think in which game it was, but he did a, like a fantastic movement uh, on the halfway line. Uh, Does he have really, a little bit like of flair that. to his game? Yeah, a tiny little bit of flair. Uh, a lot of flair, lovely, if you want lovely. to. I think uh, maybe in the Premier League... Uh, he might might get pulled out <laughs> yeah. with uh, things like yeah, in the Belgian league. It all goes a bit slower. Players are not as technically skilled, or not as fast and powerful as uh, players in the Premier League. So he might l need a little bit of adaptation. But anyway, he will show his flair and his skills because yeah, he's a player like that. If you have it in your game, sometimes you just like to show off a bit. Um, that's what like neutral uh, spectators always say. Uh, always like a bit of skill does he strike you as a player who takes responsibility on the pitch i'm just curious because obviously when you look at a young player um you want to know it's such a big step up to come to manchester city and i'm not trying to patronize it just is obviously pep guardiola kevin de bruyne harland it's just an enormous dressing room full of like superstars um what do you, how does he strike you mentally as a footballer do you think he's going to have the i guess the um the self-belief to uh, to adapt to this potential level because it's a huge ask for such a young player coming from that league as well yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I've seen players like step up. Even Kevin De Bruyne when he went from Genk. Yeah, we're talking about like uh, that's Kevin De Bruyne when he left. That's uh, exactly ten years ago. The step for him to he went on loan from Chelsea to Werder Bremen was already. 
quite big. And I think yeah. the, the Belgian league, if you look at the talent that was there at that point, the Belgian league was better than, than it is now. So um, City, the teams like City, even in the Premier League, they are even better than in the days I, I moved to England. So it is a huge step. But if he shows the same bravery as he's showing, he was showing uh, in the Belgian league and the same self-confidence with which he did those skills, you can see that why he could adapt to uh, something like the Premier League. He will need time, of course, and he will have ups and downs. He will still have ups yeah. and downs in, in, in the Belgian league. But as he's signed, as a, as a, as a, basically as a backup signing, he will get the time. And maybe you can compare his track uh, his, his progress, maybe in a way to Zinchenko yeah, when course. he played a few years in, in the Dutch league, which isn't known as the... As, as the past league is a good development league, basically. He needed time too. And after a few years, it came, it came good. And he was a more than decent backup player. So, um, yeah, of course, yes, yeah. I, can see, I can see why City are signing him, to be fair. I see all the qualities that Pep Guardiola likes in a player. So, uh, and if Pep is convinced of him, uh, even if it's as a second option, he will get the time and he will work with him. And not to forget, he's a Spanish under-21. That, that must national. help as well, isn't it? And Ex-Barcelona that, lad. Yeah, ex-Barcelona. There are two trademarks, basically, as a player. <laughs> yeah. If you send your CV, you said Spanish under-21. <laughs> we might get and, a game uh, stuff. We might get a game. We just send it in and say, yeah. like, I heard you hear fullback. We're, we, we're both from Barcelona. You, know, we don't, you never know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was going... Uh, somewhere did this week, I was going through... Uh, some uh, I was going to his, his track at record where it all played, and I I found a game of of of, uh, of Spain under twenty one where uh, Cucurella, if I pronounce it right, I might have butchered the name too. Um, <laughs> he played as a left winger, and he played and uh, and Gomez as a right winger. So that were basically the two players that City wanted to go for. So uh, it's a strange coincidence that they not played in the position that they wanted to sign him for. So um, being managed by uh, his agent being uh, Guardiola's brother might also have helped uh, a little bit. But he, when he joined down the left, you immediately saw that for him, it was like uh, just go in a shopping window, perform well on the left and then move on because he played for Dortmund hadn't succeeded. Maybe that step had been uh, too big for, yeah. for him at that point. Danny Bear went back to West Cap, performed well, but on the leg, that's, yeah, a lot of clubs are still watching some of the of the Belgian bigger clubs. So yeah, uh, of course. it's and if you perform well for Anderlecht, you will or for Bruges or for any other Belgian top club, you will get your move. Um, um, yeah, when City came in, everybody was a little bit surprised in Belgium. To be fair. But, I think he's yeah, represented yeah. by Guardiola's brother, which certainly helps. I think I think Guardiola's brother is his agent or something like that. But there's obviously quality there. And once again, as you mentioned, he, he has that CV. Uh, Guardiola said today in the press conference that um, uh, in the Under-17 World Cup a few years back, the best player in that tournament was Phil Foden and the second best player was Sergio Gomez and he remembers that. So so I guess he's, he, once again, he has that pedigree um, of being around those competitions at a high level back then. Um, going back to the way that he plays, what can Manchester City fans expect stylistically? What what kind of fullback is he? Is he? Can you compare him to any particular player? You know, uh, I never compare players because yeah, they're all enough. different. Uh, yeah. I'm like a manager. I like I don't like those comparisons because yeah, I was uh, yeah last week. I spent a whole week in Milan uh, for Charles de Kitt. Like uh, probably uh, City fans will have seen him uh, in the Champions League games against Bruges, and he was compared to Kaká, to Harvard, to. Yeah, all yeah. different players and then you look at specific uh, profiles and you have, nowadays you even have scouting uh, databases where you can uh, put in similar players and I didn't find a good one for, for Sheldon Kittler so he's on his own but anyway it's an attacking football basically in the Belgian league he quite uh, got caught out <laughs> several times defensively because he hasn't played in the position they played in a he played as a as a left uh, left back in uh, with four four at the back. So uh, even then you have some coverage, but yeah, you only have two defenders to make up for your mistakes. So it's less safe as you when you play with three at the back. So expect a lot of skills, uh, a lot of dribbles. He has a good cross too. Uh, Does he like to? Uh, he overlap. has a little bit of Kevin De Bruyne in it with his oh. crossing. To be fair, nice. To be fair. If I have to compare. 
the crossing. He has good crosses, low crosses, but also high crosses. So maybe if he plays a few games and he can play with Haaland, he can feed him in a few different ways. So it's, yeah, I'm not going to compare him even to... No, no, to that's Gonzalo, fine. Who is it? It was also good, like in in everything, but it's that type of player. So, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, does he like to? Um, is he the kind of fullback that would cut and drive inside, or does he like to go around the outside and kind of get crosses in? He, you know he, I mean? he did. He did the two of them. He did the two of them. But as he's a he's a left foot, usually left foot so always go for the left foot. So uh, yeah, of course. Um, what about- so that's why he has that cross from the back line, for instance, uh, because he's a left footer. You go there, but yeah, as he's playing on the right, on the right, he cuts more, more inside. He even plays as a right back uh, two games, I think, for Belgium. So, in in if <laughs> if you have a lot of injuries, if Cancel is not and Kyle Walker, that might even uh, try him on the on the right back, yeah, with That's the left foot on the right back, and he can turn inside. But as he's only played a uh, like maybe one or two games for Anderlecht, it might be a very uh, audacious uh, experiment. Yeah. Well, Pep's middle name is audacious, you know, so you, you're trying yeah. everyone, yeah, it's nothing too crazy for Pep. And I think I honestly do think that's probably one of the things that's drawn a little bit um, city towards him because that versatility. We know Guardiola likes, you know, pure footballers who are comfortable receiving the ball and essentially anywhere on the pitch. And I guess if Gomez has shown, you know, that he can play in multiple positions, obviously not to the, the very best level always, but he's shown that he can be do a job in those roles that shows that he's brave enough to receive the ball and try things doesn't it I guess which obviously is a very attractive trait for a, mal- a manager who value values football intelligence which which it suggests that he has and obviously how much do you, how much do you think that the essentially the stamp of approval from Vincent Company means a lot to City because you know that's Vincent Company that's he's got a statue at Manchester City do you reckon that's played into it a little bit well I, I think they will definitely uh have given Vince a call because Vince convinced in the first place when uh, company called uh, Sergio Gomez and said like like Besiktas used to do you all we all know those uh, viral videos that uh, Besiktas used to do a few years ago like yeah, yeah. come to Besiktas <laughs> but now come to Anderlecht and he was immediately convinced just because of Vincent company and um, he went there because of Vincent company and Vincent company Try to play the the city way at at Anderlecht. It, yeah, I'm not going to say he's failed, but he was difficult with yeah some of the of the level of the players that he had. So, um, but yeah, he approved them and he he always played them, even if he was half injured, he would play Sergio Gomez because he was so important for the style of football he wanted to play. He didn't succeed to play that that the brand of football, but. Gomez was very important for that. So, in the way that City, uh, the Anderlecht are training, there are some City things like uh, things that company has picked up from Pep and is using. So that step to adapting to the way City are training won't be that big too, because he will already have a few principles, and he will already have some uh, of the Pep principles from Barcelona. So. Uh, don't think that step will will be too high. Um, as I mentioned before, we we went online. I was uh, I was watching uh, the the Belgium Cup final. Uh, yeah, it must have been half of April, uh, yeah. just out of interest because I yeah, like to follow what company was was still doing. Yes, yeah, sure. and I noticed that Chicky Bagiristan was sitting in the stands, and not gonna take credit for that. But <laughs> yeah, I sent the, I sent the picture around to a few people, and I I said, yeah, what. Well, what are they doing there? Are they watching company? Because it's sometimes strange to see Chiki Begiristein on yeah. the game of uh, of Anderlecht. And our first uh, first consideration was, uh, will he be there for for company just for the sake of company? Company trying to 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 win his his, his first uh, first cup uh, as a manager he didn't win it in the end. No, at the at that point they were. Uh, they were in the in the process of of uh, finalizing uh, the move of Erling Haaland, and has been yeah reported everywhere. He did a part of his uh, medicals in Brussels. Yeah, the the, the, the hospital that Anderlecht used for for their medicals, so that was an agreement with Anderlecht. But yeah, if yeah, people are also were asking for which player he could be there. And then I said, the only the one I could see with city potential or uh, city qualities is uh, Sergio Gomez. So a uh, few people reminded me of that uh, this week that I- You were spot uh, on, mate, you were spot I, on. 
Yeah, yeah, I'd seen it well. Yeah, because it's just like he has everything what City expect. I didn't expect him to go at that point, and sure. I thought that he didn't have the level at that point to make that move as a yeah backup, you... basically. But yeah, anyway, players. Some players always surprise you uh, when they go up. Some players. I I remember. I don't know which player told me that. Uh, let me use the example of Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk, uh, big clubs had never seen it in Virgil van Dijk. He made a slow yeah, progress, just... like first going to Southampton, uh, yeah, Celtic, Southampton, yeah. and uh, and then to, to 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 Liverpool because he always played on the on the tempo of the team. So for scouts, it was difficult to see what can he do when he plays in an even better team. Yeah, it's something course. they just couldn't see, and suddenly, when he was at Liverpool, he suddenly played easily adapted to Liverpool's tempo and was there. So that means you have all the skill, but sometimes it's difficult. It's uh, a good point, yeah. Difficult to spot. Difficult to spot. So maybe with Gomez, it will be the same. Maybe he adapts quite quickly to the tempo of City, and yeah, suddenly he will be a success. So uh, for scouts and even for managers, it's yeah sometimes difficult to predict how players will adapt to circumstances. But as you have. Yeah, a Spanish contingent in uh, in Manchester too. I don't think it, it will be too difficult for him to adapt. And he's already been outside Spain twice. Been to that Germany. Helps, doesn't he? Yeah, to adapt. Helps. He's been he's been in Belgium, where yeah, a lot of people speak Spanish, but you already have the English. So uh, so he's had already adapted to two different countries. So that might help to to, to settle in in Manchester too. And I think when. Yeah, a manager is so close to yeah agent brother. It might help too, like uh, to settle in that easily. So uh, we'll see. But I don't expect a great lot of him. Not that he will play every single game, but he might even surprise us all and uh, just uh, be the new Zinchenko. Basically, that's yeah. what they are looking for: a good backups that they can use in several games and maybe yeah even become uh, potentially. Uh, a starter at left back. Yeah, of course. I mean, the thing is, I mean, I, I think he's in a good situation because City squad, I mean, people presume City have a bigger squad than they don't. And I think City fans who pay more attention realise that City squad is often very threadbare and quite thin. And even this weekend, it looks like ahead of the Bournemouth game, City have only got four or five senior players on the bench and it's going to be academy players after that. So essentially, Sergio Gomez, if he comes in, he, he's going to get game time, you know, with five substitutions and, and the World Cup and so on. And I guess if you're a natural footballer, um, which he obviously is, versatile, uh, that helps that he's Spanish, of course, he can talk to Guardiola, you know, and he has that La Marzia kind of heritage. Um, and I was, I was browsing his Instagram earlier. He does a lot of posts in English as well. I'm not sure if he speaks English, but he, he, I would guess he speaks a little bit, maybe. That could help, you know. So... I think it looks quite good for him. Um, it looks like it could be in your, uh, you know, when the when when worlds collide a little bit and the circumstances just fall into place. It could be that uh, this is a really good timing for him, and uh, I'm really excited to see how he gets on because I don't think there's any expectation, uh, and that could be a really good thing for him. The pressure's off, and he's gonna train with Guardiola. You know, uh, he already understands how Guardiola wants, and he's obviously at the company link. It just could make sense, couldn't it, Christoph, for Manchester City? You know, sometimes tra- transfers like this go under the radar, don't they? But they, you look back at it a few years and go, "Oh, that was that was the right move." You know, do you think there's a chance that it could yeah. be right here? And and definitely, when when he plays, you will, yeah, definitely enjoy some of his skills. Definitely, he will sh- sometimes show off or show Good. that little <laughs> thing that fans just like, just that little dribble or the, the yeah the. I think the the, the the Zidane movement, like uh, I don't know how what it's called. Oh yeah, the, Zidane um, had a specific, yeah, no, specific, uh, yeah. He can the little do pirouette that too. one way, maybe, is it? Yeah, yeah, the little pirouette. He might do that too. So uh, maybe Pep will say, "Don't do it. Don't do those <laughs> skills anymore." Maybe he will. Uh, he will lose all of those. No, skills, we'll see. Yeah, how's he his pace? Definitely have the bravery. Does he have good pace? Yeah, the pace is pace is more than all right. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but we'll have to see definitely because sometimes in Belgian league, he lo- players might look fast because the the game is uh, slow. Yeah, of course. But Premier League, if you have Kyle Walker for instance, <laughs> and you see Kyle Walker running, and uh, then you say, yeah, this this is a different kind yeah. of uh, kind of pace. So um, yeah, with some players like even Kevin De Bruyne, I always thought like in the Belgian league, he didn't look that fast. And his acceleration was not 
so great. But if you look now, it's not the greatest acceleration, but accelerator. But once he has the ball, yeah, he runs quite hard. And I, I think he's quite Champions. fast, KDB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Champions he's League powerful, stats. powerful, isn't it? Yeah, it's the powerful run. He needs a little bit of space to get up the speed, and then woof, I saw that. I think he was the maybe. The, the 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 ratings were wrong, but I think he was the fastest in the Champions League this season with a, a sprint of 39 kilometers an hour. Stupid. Something you don't expect of, of Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin Usain Gold De Bruyne, although <laughs> probably he only reached that, that that speed for a little second, and it was a long sprint. But it shows what he's capable of. So uh, he's maybe for, Gomez, um... I think he's 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 it pretty much he looks faster, but yeah. maybe he's not. But yeah, we, we will just have to see in the Premier League or just in a League Cup game uh, when he comes up uh, against faster players how he will cope with that. Uh, yeah, of course. I mate. think they they will have done their scouting well. I think. Yeah. yeah. If... I'm uh, I'm excited to see he gets on. Christoph, thank you so so much, man. It's been um uh, it's been enlightening uh, and really fascinating. Thank you so much for coming on, taking the time, uh, guys. Christoph, he, he's he's Mr. Belgian football. He really really is, and you know you know he's the one basically when we're all panicking about KDB's injuries. Christoph's the one to calm everyone down. The amount of times you've done that, mate, and I'm, and I appreciate that. Or sometimes send us into spirals of terror, but still, either way, thank you so so much for for all the updates around um, Belgian football and so on. And um, where can people find you on Twitter and so on? Yeah, it's still the same. It's like still HLN in uh, England. Yeah, yeah written the Belgian <laughs> the, the way yeah. with the with the weird E after the G. But I yeah, put it on Twitter. As well, I, so. I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't changed my Twitter handle because yeah, then uh, hey, it works. once you're verified, you you have to oh, ask yeah. uh, permission to to change your handle. So I'm still there, although I'm HLN now in England, Italy, and uh, <laughs> Spain, and none Germany. of characters. Yeah, uh, HLN all over all over Europe basically. It should be but, yeah. HLN in Europe really, shouldn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah but either yeah, way, yeah. Uh, guys, I'll put a link in the description. Go and follow Christoph; he's absolutely fantastic over there. And an essential follow if you're a football fan on Twitter. Thank you so much for coming on, Christoph. It's been really fascinating. Um, yeah, maybe see each other in in Manchester soon. We will do. We will do. We'll get. We'll first, catch a game. game. Yeah, yeah, I haven't I haven't booked a game as yet because City start wasn't too exciting with the clubs that well, let me know let me know when them. um we'll, we'll have a pint mate uh I'll, yeah. we'll watch Sergio Gomez together and we'll we'll stare at Cheeky Briggs from a distance once again uh, <laughs> all right cheers man cheers for coming on everyone guys Christoph's an absolute legend let me show you some love in the comments below don't forget to give this video a like and all the usual YouTube stuff and let me know if you're excited about Sergio Gomez and go and give Christoph a follow he's a top bloke as you can probably tell from this video cheers have a good evening